Chloe's mortal nemesis is the triple. Welcome to Still Untitled, the Adam Savage Project. I'm Will. I am Adam. And I am Norm. Uh, exercise. <laughs> wow, you just went right into it. Nice segue. Wow, we're just stampeding no, right we, towards we want the subject the first matter. third of the podcast. Okay. No, no. I'm what do you think about Buck Rogers, the 70s version with Aaron Gray and the robot and the doctor on the disc on the robot? Is that something? Dr. Theopolis? Dr. Theopolis. I actually have a, a model kit. You have a Theopolis? Kit. I have a model kit for making a complete Dr. Theopolis you, upstairs. You missed a window when your sons were younger. To make them dress up as as uh, Tweety and Dr. Theopolis. Tweety and Dr. The well, so the one thing that Maybe. I will say about your opening question is I didn't hear anything after the words Aaron Gray. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it was a formative uh, it show It was for totally. Yes. Gil Gerard and Aaron Gray. I, I watched it. Gil it was, Gerard? I knew he was Buck Rogers. Oh! Um, <laughs> no one cared. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry like, Gil. <laughs> uh... I watched it when I was a kid. I knew it was cheesy even then. Yeah, it was uh, It was on the Batman spectrum for but me. But I loved Erin Gray. I loved her. And she is still going to cons and signing autographs. That's I actually great. got an autograph from her for a friend a few years ago through another friend. For a friend. For a friend <laughs> named John. Okay. <laughs> Just make this one out to eBay, please. Um, um, that I, show was like for cheesy science fiction. I haven't watched it as an adult. So I, I have not either. Right. And I'm, I'm there might kind be of not intentionally. Some in our audience, I'm asking for a friend who might not know the premise of oh. the show. I know the premise. Okay, so so since Norm, you know the premise, Rogers, we'll let you was, explain I it. I think the official title is Buck Rogers in the 25th Century. Right. So he says it all. He is an astronaut, much like Steve Austin, mm -hmm. but his accident when he goes into you space. Mean the wrestler. Or more like not Charles. The, or the, no, the, the, more the like Charles, yeah. Charlton Heston. Yeah, kind of, okay, kind of like Charlton Heston. He gets sucked forward into time, but when he lands, the planet's not filled with damn dirty apes. It's a advanced civilization. Right. We've had some. Apparently, it seems like some bad things had happened oh. in the interval. Yes, yes. And but then everything turned out okay. So it's not a parable for racism. It was a no. parable for. They were. Were there? Hmm. I can't. I it was cannot kind of remember the show engaging in any <laughs> complex <laughs> social commentary. They talked. They, like the one thing that I remember is when he got sent to the prison planet, where all the prisoners were kept underground, and once he went down in the hole, you never came back. Right. That's the. Oh, that's wow. the one I remember. Um. I will also tell you. Do you remember who did the voice of Twiggy? Twiggy. No. The voice of Twiggy. Diggy, 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 diggy. Jeez. She looks great. Bob. Was it Marlon Brando or somebody super famous? Mel Blanc. Really? That yeah. makes sense. So yeah. it was an optimistic version of also the, the voice of Tweety as envisioned in the seventies. Yes. Yeah, it was basically like Battlestar Galactica, um, but it was se very serialized. As I, I, I specifically remember the first. I remember seeing the pilot when it aired, and I can't even remember how old I was. I can't. I don't know the. Actual, you must have been young because it was. Yeah, I it was, was early seventies. But I remember him kind of confusedly going to his bedroom and being like, "I'd like to go to bed," and the bed went. Psh! and inflated yeah. in front of him. And I was like, that's cool. Robot dogs, robot pets. Robot dogs. But the oh. better robot dog was the one they put a chimp in for Battlestar Galactica. There was, was a, chimp a chimp in that dog? Or was it a, was it a little person? I, I can't remember which. It could have been two little people. Could have been. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is going to weird places. <laughs> wow. What if there's, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> How many, anyway. Um, so, it, but it's a fascinating thing. That what anthropological, uh, uh, experiment to look at as how the 70s envision the far future. Right, right. So, it was very optimistic. I have, I, I was thinking about that because I was watching, I realized that I stopped watching, as I do, Battlestar, the reboot of Battlestar yeah. Galactica, let's say midway through the third season. So okay. after they got off of New Caprica, yeah. I was just like, I'm done. I've oh, had enough. New, that New Caprica season is a rough one. It sucked. It is a very rough ride. It is really unpleasant. I'm almost done with the first season again, which is, I think, one of the better seasons of TV ever made. Well, so Bill Prady, mm -hmm. who's the creator of Big Bang Theory, is a friend. And he when he told me that he's the one that got me to watch Battlestar Galactica, and he said, do not let anyone tell you anything. And just what all, all I want you to do is watch the two hour pilot. That's it. And he, he was totally right. That two hour pilot is like lost in that. It it's amazing. grabs you by the throat and shakes you for two seconds. Yeah. It's totally riveting. And, and I would even extend it to the first episode. I agree. The first episode is 33. Even the second episode is great. But the first episode where they have to jump every 33 minutes oh. and they're just, they're just, 
the, sh- the living shit has been beaten out oh, of him. It's, totally, it's an amazing hour of TV. It, it totally sets the bar incredibly high. And that bar is maintained through most of the entire series run. It's an incredible show. So, New Caprica season is is absolutely the roughest part well, of the, run. the first couple episodes are really strong. And then it got real dull and boring because I think they used all their effects budget. And they, <laughs> they were like, well, I don't know how we're going to top that. Love let's triangles. Do, yeah, let's have a lot of weird <laughs> robot sex. Um, well, you mentioned but I'm going to come back for the fourth. But wait, and, wait, wait. What was the point? The point was they're rebooting Battlestar Galactica again, theoretically. What? Yeah. Possibly. Possibly. Why Why is Buck Rogers laying fallow all these many years? I know. It's not a proven, Jesus. It's not a proven franchise. If they're re- if they're re- I'm, I'm, that makes me sad that they're rebooting Battlestar Galactica. What are they going to do next? The Sopranos. They've starring... rebooted Knight Rider already. And Pulp Fiction. Yet, you know, it's 20 years old, Adam's time. They'll never reboot. <laughs> no, that's, 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 I mean, that makes me very sad. Speaking um, of original TV, though, uh, yeah. and you mentioned Lost, and when you talk to Damon Lindelof yeah. uh, for the talking room, he talked about uh, he's working on The Leftovers. I saw the first trailer for The Leftovers yeah. on yeah. HBO yesterday. Yeah. What's The Leftovers? Leftovers is Damon's new series that he's written and producing, uh, and he's writing all the episodes for. Uh, it's directed by Peter Berg, and it basically takes place effectively now, mm-hmm. uh, except that... Two years ago, this mm-hmm. is where the show opens. Two years ago, two percent of the world's population disappeared. Got they were raptured. So it's like the Unknown. Kirk Cameron thing. Unknown. It's not. It's 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 sort of like the Elmore Leonard book Touch. Uh, it's a long story, but basically something supernatural has happened, but we're not talking about the supernatural. We're just dealing with the people who are still on Earth and what it means that they're still here. And and do they know? Like, was it? Is it clear that it was a good rapture or were, could they have all been kidnapped by aliens? Well, or no, some of the people or... who left were like cardinals and others were serial killers. Okay. It was all over the place. So, or, so or on death row for being a serial so killer. So it's not it's, like everybody that's left amb- knows that they were ambiguity evil. Ambiguity is the okay. flavor of the day. I, I like don't know this. much more beyond that. I yeah. haven't seen the trailer the yet. The trailer looks good. And it was, it, the trailer does not clearly say raptured. Yeah. But uh, it's, it does pose that two million people disappeared. It's very exciting about um, or two percent Peter Berg. I mean, really, the 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 the, the, the incredible powerhouse of Damon writing mm-hmm. and Peter Berg directing is Friday Night Lights. Yeah, yeah. Friday Night Lights creator, showrunner. That show amazing, is so good, so good. I, it's it's very exciting. But we were going to talk about exercise. I don't yes. know why the original television thing. You just wanted. To I jump stuttered off. and I thought ah. Tweety. Beat, beat, beat. <laughs> That's where it came from. <laughs> Reverse segue. A little, that a is, little glimpse yeah. into Will's brain. Yeah, Not three, just... three to seven steps behind or ahead, <laughs> depending on which way time flows for you. Right. Um, we um, were going to talk about exercise and diet and and you know maintaining a uh, healthy lifestyle in a world full of temptation and evil. Well, so uh, recently, uh, my friend Max Landis, whose Twitter handle is up to my knees. Okay. Um, in- you can only imagine. Okay, he wrote uh, Chronicle. Yeah. Yes, uh, right. Yeah. So Max is so Max wrote the secret. He said the secret untold history of MythBusters is that Adam keeps losing weight and looking younger and getting more hair as the seasons <laughs> progress. And I was like, I love you. And he says, I'm only if he's. Uh, I won't tell that joke. Anyway. <laughs> Um, the fact is, yeah, I've, uh, I've managed to lose, uh, about 30 pounds over the last two, uh, uh, is it 2014? Yes. Two and a half years. What's your one secret trick? It was one the, simple since trick. you met us. What's that? It is. It's since you met it us. Is. My simple trick is lunch. Lunch. Not eating or no. eating only? Well, so I started out by not eating lunch. I just eliminated lunch from my day. That's a That can be a problem, though, because then what happens is you come home at the end of the day, and instead of eating a healthy meal, you load up on garbage that's laying around. Even more than that. I, so th- let's just... That worked for me for losing 20 pounds in a fairly short period of time, i.e. about three... Three and a half months. That's a that is a healthy amount of time to lose it's twenty. A reasonably pounds. healthy yeah. amount of time. But what I found was after about eight months of not eating lunch, and it wasn't like I never ate lunch on weekends. Of course, there's the social aspect to to meals, and mm-hmm. I would have brunch. So it was like maybe four or five days a week I would eliminate lunch. And to be clear, I've never eaten breakfast. So it was like between waking up and dinner, I'd have a you know, An a apple. couple of teas. Okay. What? And I'm okay. You didn't get like the shakes or the... I, I'm not someone who gets cranky when they get low blood sugar. Oh. That turns out to be a dent of my personality. Oh. And, you know, hmm. it's like, that's not my wife. You just, she definitely gets cranky yeah, when no, her blood sugar is low. Keep the spouses fed and watered. Yes. Um, but 
I so that works for me, right? It doesn't work for everybody. Also, frankly, it's quite interesting to just wait until you're hungry to eat because you'll find if you actually pay attention that we modern culture almost never wait until we're hungry to eat. We eat because it's time to eat. But or because it's convenient to eat. Yeah. yeah. Um, so after about eight months of lunch only two or three days a week, I found... I found a couple of problems. One is that, yes, if you don't eat anything until you sit down at dinner, I would not only eat my meal, I eat all of everybody's mm, leftovers yeah. at the table. I just vacuum it up. And so oh, my body hey, you started, want some cake? Yeah. I, well, right. I'll have the whole thing. Yeah. And my body started going, oh, you're not packing enough calories on during the day. We'll just save all the calories from dinner. Yeah. yeah. And so that didn't work. And I found that it didn't make any difference if I had a light lunch. So uh, I started doing things like soup for lunch. Just a simple salad for lunch, uh, even a restaurant soup, a cup of it instead of a bowl. Mm -hmm. uh, Probably not something creamy or cheesy. I, I don't try and make those distinctions. The fact is, for me, the meal that I was talking to someone yesterday who his big meal is lunch because that's where he does his business. My big meal is dinner. It's the centerpiece of my social life. My wife and I love to cook. We love to eat. We know a lot of restaurateurs and chefs and we're omnivores. And dinner is just not something where I'm going to want to limit the kind of food I eat. Dinner is a whole totally different thing. Totally yeah. get that. I don't want to limit the kind of food I eat. I don't want to limit the amount of food that I eat. I just, I want the whole thing, right? Mm -hmm. So lunch was where we, we gave. Um, the other thing I've been, so anyway, sorry, let me just finish the story without going on too long. I stopped not eating lunch at all and started eating between two and 400 calories for lunch, okay. a really, really light lunch. And I found that for dinner, if I ate a snack of about 100 calories about an hour before dinner, I also ate a lot less. Right. Like I, I sort of self-hacked. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it really, really, it's really worked to, to make that last 10 pounds. So I got from 200 pounds down to 180. That's a, that that that's a tough that's considerable. 10 pounds. That's yeah. the ten pounds. That's the twenty pounds that I've that I've always like. I'll get down to two hundred, two ten, and then it's brick wall. Well, two hundred was I. I two hundred was uh, the heaviest I've been, and I was at two hundred for really most of MythBusters. Mm -hmm. One ninety five, two hundred. Um, so I worked to get down to one eighty. And then 180 became like this wall. And I just started really, I started weighing myself every day. Again, not with the goal of like achieving something, but just noticing my patterns of what I was eating and what it was Maybe doing I, and changing things. After Stay out you of use the bathroom. Yeah. What's when, that? That's when you weigh yourself. After you like shed a couple pounds. Yeah, absolutely. Morning. 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 Oh, yes. You lose, Always you lose a pound. And if you weigh yourself, that you want something, a fascinating little science experiment, weigh yourself before you go to bed and weigh yourself in the morning. You'll be a pound and a half lighter. And you know where it just goes? Just from respirating. Yeah. It's all in your sheets. <laughs> uh, not quite. Bang goes to theory was faking it when they did that dehumidifier sucking up like a pint of water mm. out of your body every... Anyway, you respirate a lot. Um, so the light lunches... Wait, what was the last thing I was going to say? Light lunches, the snack before dinner. The snack before dinner. I've also become mostly a vegetarian up until dinner time. And Thomas Keller actually calls this VB6, vegetarian before six, mm -hmm. as a bit of his sort of food movement of oh, that's smart. eating yeah. lighter yeah. and more sensibly uh, so that you're not basically so famished by the time you get to dinner, you consume everybody's plate. Well, so, so the thing that I started doing... I started tracking calories because I didn't have any idea what anything, right. how much, you know, I knew that cheese and meat were probably bad for you and you shouldn't eat too much ice cream. Sugar is bad. Yeah. But I didn't know, I didn't understand the scale of yeah, the, yeah. of the, of the bad, you know, that a milkshake is 10 times worse than ice cream because you, you know. What's you, funny though, is that I've been finding, I've been finding that I count, I counted calories for a long time and it didn't do me a lick of good at all. So that's the thing is counting the count that, that ended up, all that did was give me the knowledge that I needed to know when I was making a bad decision or a good decision. Well, and also counting calories only helps if you are eating the, if you eat the food that's in the middle of the grocery store. And let's be clear, in a grocery store, the natural ingredients you cook with are all around now the perimeter outside, yep. and all the prepackaged food are in the oh. middle. And those calorie counts are accurate. But when you look up calories, tomato soup, one cup, and it says 170 calories, that is total bullshit when it comes to a restaurant where that soup is made of butter and tomato. This oh, is right. probably like 700 the secret calories. ingredient, always butter. Always butter. But... But and what, salt, which makes you retain water. But what you can do is, if you're making your own food, which you should be doing, yes. and you should be shopping around the edge of the grocery store, yeah. like that that's phase one yeah. of not yeah. being fat. Is and saving money. 
No, it's actually a lot more expensive. <laughs> it is so it's way more expensive. expensive. Yeah, it's the, just a really yeah. it's the, it's the it's terrible the health, Eating healthy is expensive. Yeah, yes. if you look in if you look in the that cost sucks. per calorie, the outside edges of the grocery store are the most expensive places. I'm, in the I'm store. saying not like eating at McDonald's, but shopping smart also. It's it's really hard to eat cheaper than McDonald's. <laughs> it really is. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a terrible truth. Um, but but anyway, the upshot is once I had the knowledge, then I then I realized, look. It's not worth 500 calories for me for me to eat something uh, a shitty burrito from the yeah. place down the street at lunch. I'd much rather have something that is less bad for me and and then then waste that. Yeah. I'd rather have that on something that's memorable and special and yeah. good than something that's kind of crappy. I have noticed something by weighing myself every day. Um one is that every study and every meta study about weight loss techniques makes it really clear that you that anyone can lose weight using various techniques. Mm -hmm. Keeping that weight off requires a fundamental shift in your consciousness, and you will always be thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm always thinking about what I'm eating. And because I weigh myself every day, I've noticed that you're always on one of three tracks. You're either stable, or you're ga in a gaining weight track, or a losing weight track. And they are really, really specific. And you can't go by two or three days, because your weight fluctuates by as much as five pounds a day in terms of how much food and water you're mm -hmm. taking in, how much exercise is going out, uh, even how warm or cold that it is. Um, I could weigh myself at, at, at any rate. I've gotten now down over the past eight months. I'm now at like 168. And I've, wow. I haven't been this light since I moved to San Francisco or maybe a year after. San Francisco is a hard Francisco. city to stay skinny. <laughs> uh, and I'm really, really happy with this weight. I really feel good about it. I feel like walking everywhere. I, it's made me more, 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 it's made me more athletic. I've, you know, I've, I've, I'm, so what are your exercise routines? I do about a hundred pushups a day. That's about it. That is exactly what I do. 50 in the morning and 50 in the evening. I do 30 at a time. I can't do 50 at a time. I can only do 30 at a time. Still a hundred <laughs> a day consistently. Feels great. It does. It feels, it feels really good. Great. And my wife is very pleased with the results. How long did it take you to get to 100 push-ups a day? Um, well, no, I started. I started that. Uh, I started the push-ups on the last tour. So I started it last fall. Okay. Um, and basically, I was doing. I started doing 20 at a time, and I just found that I was able to find the time to do five sets of 20, and then three sets of uh, three sets of 33. The hardest thing for me about the push-ups is that I'm really impatient about them. It's this tiny period of time. It's a very small period of time. But and for Christ's sakes, I find it so stupefyingly boring <laughs> that I realize from a, from a meditative perspective, yeah. I really need to just stop being there thinking, I can't wait till these are done. Can't wait till these yeah. are done. Can't wait till these are done. It's an awful exercise to do like that. I have to just get into the mindset of just like, this is what I do. This is what this That's is why what's happening first thing now. in the morning and last thing at night, and the rest of my life is like this. <laughs> I'm just going to push up for the rest of my life. Then down, then up again. Well, it just, it, it, yeah. It's funny though. You don't ever really stop thinking about what you're taking in. So I'll notice if I'm on an upper trajectory, I'll notice like I'll go away for a weekend where I don't have my scale and I eat a bunch or I go out for a couple of meals. Sorry. I, for, I, I buried the lead. The biggest thing that I did for losing weight the single biggest thing is I stopped drinking mm. and I stopped drinking about two years ago. And it's not because I drank too much. I never, you know, of course, like anyone, I, I got drunk occasionally. There's highs the, and lows. For the most part, it was part of there's a stress management. You know, my life is incredibly busy. I'm under a lot of stress a lot of the time. And I found that the moment I stopped drinking, that stress got easier to maintain. And I know a lot of people use alcohol as a stress relief. That's fine if that works for them. It totally doesn't for me. It actually over over the long course makes me more stressed. I wake up in less of an ability to deal with the world. Uh, and also, frankly, I don't like myself when I'm drunk. I, I get loud and I start yelling and name dropping. I'm just a ter I Look, it's not like I think people walk around going, boy, I was around Adam when he was drunk and what a dick. No, I'm not a dick. I just, I'm not very mindful and I don't like that guy. Well, oh, and by the way, what, 
if you quit drinking, the first place I lost weight was right here under my chin. It was oh, wow. fabulous. It was unbelievable. It was just like, I stopped drinking and two weeks later, I was like, whoa, how about that? Well, it was very, the vanity is a nice motivator. I mean, the thing for me, though, with the drinking is that if I'm going to have 120 calories of something, I'd rather have a piece of cake yeah. than one one drink. Totally. Yeah. Um, and I've actually started to add uh, some non-alcoholic beers like Klaus Thaler or Bex. Mm -hmm. which so you are, can still enjoy the social aspect. I do enjoy the social aspect, but I specifically notice even having like three beers in a week, I can feel the difference in what it's doing to my caloric intake because of those empty calories. Because for the most part, sorry, again, I buried another lead. One of the other things I did besides quit drinking is uh, I drink almost nothing but water. I thought or, you were going to say you developed a crippling meth habit. <laughs> Luckily, no. <laughs> oh, that's good. Uh, I drink almost nothing but water or the vitamin water zeros. Okay. Which I love. I, 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 I've had a couple. You, you had I a, have a few Diet Cokes a week, but those rot your teeth. What a bogus thing that they rot your teeth. My, my, my dentist was like, oh, do you grind your teeth? And I'm like, no. And she's like, then you drink a lot of Diet Soda. And I'm like, yeah. She said, yeah, they, they rot away. The carbonic acid in the away, Diet yeah. Soda eats away your teeth. I'm confident that science will cure whatever Diet Coke cures <laughs> by so, the time I get older. So for the triple. So for the most part, yeah, I, I now eat a light lunch of between two and 400 calories. I drink almost nothing but zero calorie drinks or water. Water, no juice, no, none of no that stuff. No juice, boy, is juice calories. calories. Yeah. Man, your life sucks, Adam. You can't enjoy anything. Well, I eat really, really <laughs> well. But we it, eat pork belly and oh. duck fat and <laughs> eggs and bacon for dinner. Man, I love that shit. We cook it, we eat it, we go out and get it. So I mean, it still allows dinner to be the, the social and 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 what do you call it the sensory event mm. dinner is in our lives and and the thing about it is when you notice you're on an upward trajectory as long as you figure out how to maintain then that doesn't mean you stop what you're doing and start doing 200 push-ups and start eating salads for two weeks it just means that you either say okay i'm going to be fine gaining a couple pounds and keep enjoying yourself and then you have a couple of weeks where you where you eat a You've little bit be better a little more yeah. aesthetic and you know it's really difficult because your routine changes all the time i do i do days at a time where i'm working in the mythbusters shop and it's easy for me to do a really light lunch then i do weeks where we go out on location and sometimes we're ordering from the local ribs joint it's really hard to find something light from the local ribs yeah. joint little hint shrimp like 10 calories a piece. Yeah, but nice. high in cholesterol. High in cholesterol, that's true. Uh, you get it you're good with your bad. It's true, it's true. Um, but the, 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 the fact is I'm, I'm, I'm so happy at this weight. I'm just, I'm much, much more, much less stressed. Oh, also the added bonus was I got rid of my sleep apnea. Oh. Um, my, my doctor had told me um, that something like 50% of people with sleep apnea can get rid of it by losing 10% of their body weight. Yeah. And I've now lost, let's see, from 200 to 168, that's 15% of yeah. my body weight. You were right. I heard it. You got it fast. He explained the joke <laughs> before, too. Um, and that, 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 so that means my sleep is better as well. Um, and since I'd done a sleep study, I learned that my sleep apnea is the worst when I lie on my back. So in addition to losing the 15% of my body weight, I also taught myself never to sleep on my back. And that has also been a key part of stress management. Eight hours of sleep a night. That's wow. good quality sleep. It's done a tremendous amount for my ability to maintain it my It just mood. makes you sharper. It does. I mean, that's the thing is if you sleep enough, if you're not sleeping enough, you're going to be a little slower than you would be otherwise. And there's a, there's a thing that I don't sleep a lot to give, you know, to even out the playing field. <laughs> there's, a, nice there's, a, there's a, yourself, there's a Mythbusters meme that people, longtime viewers may remember that it's this joke that around four in the afternoon, Adam needs a cookie or he gets cranky. Since I went with the light lunches, I no longer have the afternoon slump. Um, which I realized was a, a caloric slump. Uh, the light lunches means that I'm at the same level all day long. And that's also really, really nice. Yeah. Cause I genuinely did get cranky around four o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, we want to hear what your, your experience. Yeah, if you have questions, yeah. I do also ascribe to Tim Ferriss's rule of <laughs> one day a week, you can just forget everything and eat 
anything you want. Like whatever diet you're well, on. Because the thing is, you it, can throw it yeah. to the wind one day a week, and your body will adjust. But most of it just goes through. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You have an probably eight thousand calorie dinner. Your, yeah. old, your body's only going to store however many it's used to storing just, from that. Yeah. Exactly. There's some Maybe side effects once a week. <laughs> there are some side effects. Um, day before the cleaning lady comes. Enjoy. No, not a good idea. <laughs> oh, Don't, do that. Don't do that. Gross. <laughs> oh my oh. gosh! I just found out my kids hadn't cleaned out their toilet or told me that it was clogged, and I had to go home and deal with it. Those little bastards. <laughs> they clogged it. <laughs> you should just get a snake. It go to the hardware like, store. It looks like Calcutta in their toilet. Oh my, oh it Jesus. is a oh, horror no. show. Oh. <laughs> just, just go to the hardware store, buy a snake, <laughs> put it down there, and, and there. open an iPad with the YouTube instructions for how to use a snake and be like, good luck, kids. No, 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 no. I can do this with the plunger. I've done it before. Oh. It's not like they're flushing apples down what the toilet. Do you, what do you do with the plunger? To clean it off afterwards. I flush the toilet a whole bunch more times. And just, just spin it around? And, okay. And you can around. dump the yeah. Clorox oh, all over that. Yeah. And I taste it to make sure it's clean. <laughs> you lick it. Yeah. Uh, if you get dysentery, you need yeah. to do a better job next then time. Then I know that I need to do better. Yes. And probably you should take your kids to the hospital. I think that is a fine, fine note to finish on. Yeah, we're not going to do better than that. We'll see you guys <laughs> next week. Uh, like us on YouTube. Uh, review us on iTunes. If you want to sign up for premium memberships, go to tested.com. Which you totally should Slash do. premium. And you can see more of the... We'll, 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 we'll go record a video of you cleaning out the toilet and post that as a premium. No, we're we totally. Do that. That's not premium content. No, that's not, that's, that's whatever the opposite. Of yeah, premium if, content if you is, don't pay us, we'll you have pay to watch you that. to see that. Exactly. See you guys next week. Bye. Bye.